Hey everybody, it's MedTech67. I know it's been a while. I haven't had time to really make any videos. I've been working like crazy. We've been busier than a one-legged whore at a foot fetish brothel and I just haven't had any time to crank out more videos. But today we are doing uh, wheel bearings on a Honda Pioneer 1000. If I have time this morning before the clock starts, I might be able to get the fronts done, but I hope to at least get the rears done. But let's get to it. I'm gonna get these lug nuts off to start with. They are 19s. Always gotta drop one on video. Always. Alright, next we're gonna get this brake caliper off. Sure you have a brake hook standing by. You don't ever want to let a brake caliper hang by the brake line. It's a bit dirty under here than I thought it was. Oops, embarrassing. We're just taking the uh, bracket and the caliper off whole. My brake pads still look really good. I've seen a lot of people on the forums it seems like they go through brake pads in a hurry. And uh, these are the stock brake pads and this thing's a 2016 with 3,000 miles on it. So I mean, granted I do a whole lot more, you know, long distance driving I guess is what you could say, as opposed to trail riding. There's a cotter pin here. We're going to pull out. Good God, Honda uses some beefy cotter guns. Just going to straighten the ends out with your needle nose. Push those guys on out. Not playing this game. Stopped playing this game a long time ago with cotter pens. Okay, and then we're going to take off this castle nut. It is a 30 millimeter. It does not have a whole lot of meat on it. So you want to make sure that you get that socket all the way up on there because it's got this part for your cotter pens. So. Don't mess up and not get on there all the way because then you're going to have a stripped off castle nut on your CV socket. Alright, from what I understand, it pulls right off. And there is an O ring on the back. Oh man, that grease smells. What the hell is that? There's an O-ring on the back and there's a seal on the front that keeps the water out of that bearing. Oh, that smells horrible. What kind of grease is that? Jesus. It, I can't quite describe the aroma That is potent. That or it's something that's in the, yeah, that's gotten in there and stayed in there, but whew, that smells like an anchovy's twat. Jesus. All right, so we're gonna take off this shield and we're gonna take off these two bolts and this whole knuckle's gonna come off so we can go press this thing out. Oh man, I'm sorry y'all, but that is, that is overpowering. I promise I'm not being dramatic. That is the rankest smell I've ever... It's 
smelled, and I've done a lot of limited slip differentials with that friction modifier. And that is, oh man. Please, if you're doing this, comment and tell me if yours smelled like that. All right, get that shield out of the way. Snapping super easy to get to, but you're gonna need a large pair of snapping pliers. We'll get to that. Now we're gonna take off these two knuckles, or these two bolts in the knuckle. Uh, those are 14s. I need a wrench and a socket. Helps if you spin it as you take it out, it'll walk its way out. There's that top one. Get back on there. Or just hold on to shit. All right, so there is our entire knuckle off. These little guys fell off when it fell off. We're going to take this whole thing over to the uh, parts washer and clean her up real good before we go starting to disassemble. Don't try to take man frame. Don't try to press anything if there's dirt in the way. Bad things will happen. It's part of the mess in the hutch. I haven't had a whole lot of time to stop and clean up lately. Like I said, I'm in here early this morning getting this job done before I gotta go do some other stuff. And this is the best place I've really got to uh, show you how to do this. Maybe I can zoom in, kick the old light on. All right, so we just want to compress the snap ring and probably going to want a pry tool as you compress it. I also like to do this in the hutch because it's got a few walls to keep this thing from flying away. Just going to pry that up. The little jeezless bastard. There we go. Alright, there's our snap ring out. And now we can clean this up a bit. We're going to take her over to the press and press this guy on out. Now, as you can see, this will require a few specialty tools that you may not have. So, we're going to go get this fella done. All right, because of recording error far beyond my control, I'm going to record the uh, left side getting pressed out. Um, so I've got my arbor plates sitting on these bosses for that dust shield. Uh, I did have to space up the left side just a bit because it's not really level. And I've got just a um, bearing race driver that fits. It is kind of pressing on the inner seal, but I really don't care about this bearing. So as long as it all just presses out, I really don't care what happens to it. Um, just want to make sure it's all centered up. nice and slow if something feels wrong it's usually because it is make sure you guys can see that okay all right here we go
Hmm. Bearing looks fine, actually. Oh, yeah, but she's junk, though. A lot of movement. She's a, she's a bit worn out. Before that bearing goes back in, you want to make very sure that this bore is absolutely clean. <coughs> no dirt in there whatsoever because that can stop the whole process, it can jam the bearing, it can warp the race. And you're also going to want to clean out the snap ring groove. That way when it all goes back together, it just snaps right back together like it's supposed to. So I'm going to take this back over to the parts washer real quick. You guys don't want to see that, I'm sure. And make sure that we're all nice and clean. And then we'll put this bearing back in. So I just realized, well, I just remembered, I've got a freaking seal driver set. And this guy fits up about perfect, so I'm just going to use that guy to push her back in. All right, so we'll take her over to the press. I have to figure out how to fandangle it up there to get it sitting nice and level on the press. This is a uh, 72 millimeter driver. See, I've got a 76, and that one's just, it's too big. So call it a 72, and it's just on the inside of it so you can get it down inside this lip here. So. We'll go do that real quick and get her put in. All right, so I had to bring it up a notch on the legs. Um, I'm just setting it straight on the table of the uh, vice or the press here. The table rocks a little bit, which I don't like. It is a Harbor Freight press. Before you go pressing this in, won't hurt one bit. Go ahead and put a light coat of grease. Not only will this help prevent corrosion and this thing from seizing in there, but it will also help this bearing press in a little bit better. This is just that wheel bearing grease that Ford uses. It's super high in molly. Make sure your bear, you know, bore again is nice and clean. Got a real light coat of grease on this guy. Now I had to use this piece of flat stock to level out because uh, I've just got it sitting on the bosses for the bushings and that one's a bit further away from center line than this one so I just used this piece of flat sheet metal to, um, to equal it out to get it as level as possible. It doesn't help that my table also moves a bit but we're going to get to pressing this guy in. I just had to make sure I'm recording this time. Rookie mistake. What the hell? take this nice and slow and if something feels wrong it's because it is center this guy up sideways and that's what I mean if it feels wrong stop if it was moving just fine and then all of a sudden stop like that and the press starts loading up stop what you're doing think the problem through
I think we're bottom there. Let's double check. Yeah, I can see the groove. Bearing spins nice and freely. Make sure I'm in frame. But you know we can stop because I can see the snap ring groove. See, that's what I was saying. If there's grease that's in the way, it's just going to get pushed on out. But now there's a nice film of grease in there to help keep the water out and keep that guy from rusting. So we're going to go snap our snap ring back in. Just put a light coat of grease on this guy. Again, it's mainly for corrosion prevention. Now, you guys may be wondering, if this is a, a bearing that gets used in cars, why does it go out so quick on a side-by-side? -side? And it's a very plain and simple answer, environment. It's just a completely different environment than you have on a car. We do a lot of water fording. Water is the biggest enemy of bearings. I mean, this usually goes in a small passenger car that never really sees water. And I can tell you from here in Oklahoma, every storm season, every time we have high water, a month or two later, sometimes a few months later, you see a lot of people coming in with growling wheel bearings. That's because they drove through a bunch of high water and now the wheel bearings are shot. So the plain and simple answer is just a different environment. All right. Let's see if I can get you guys in frame here. Our snap ring is back in the groove, and this puppy is ready to go back together. Now I'm going to show you real quick how that wheel greaser works. Now you may have heard the argument, you know, people say, "Oh, you got to do your wheel greaser. You got to grease your bearings," because, you know, like I said, we're in a different environment, and if you want your bearings to last, you got to grease them. That is correct. These things probably would not have gone out if I would have used one of these guys. Uh, and the plain and simple reason is, you know, everybody goes, oh, these are sealed bearings. They're not greasable. How can you grease a sealed bearing? Well, the seal on a sealed bearing is kind of laughable. Uh, it's not really a seal. It's more like a dust shield. So grease can and does come out when the grease in there gets really hot. When you've been using this thing for a long time, the grease starts coming out just a little bit at a time. And then when you drive through water, it also can put get water in there and cause rust. So you want to displace that water. What these greasers do is they get into that groove right there that's in between the two races. This is a double roller roller bearing, right? What it does is it seals up with an O-ring. The grease comes in through that zerk and out that little hole right there. Ah! Hard to do on camera. I'm going to just throw a tab of lube on there to help push it in I say you can never have too much lube so when you take off your hub you're gonna press this guy in you're gonna press this guy in well, this is embarrassing this thing may need different o-rings It was cheap on Amazon. You see what I'm doing. Whew, it may not need O-rings. It's a very, very tight fit. Anyways, I'm going to put some different O-rings on there. As you can see, when the grease gets pushed in, it's going to push into that groove there. Can you guys see that okay? I've got it pulled out to expose that groove, but when you push it all the way in, that groove sits right inside the groove of the greaser and shoves the grease on in. Now, you don't want to go hog wild on it because you can pop the seal out. You want to push in grease just until you might start to see it weeping, but I wouldn't go more than five or six pumps at a time, and I'd do this pretty much every other oil change. See if I can get it on camera of what it looks like. I have to go grab my grease gun. I'm going to try my best here to see we can get this to camera. I'm curious how it's going to work without O-rings. So I guess let's see. A 
I just felt the bearing move, so obviously some grease went in there. Now a little bit of grease coming out the top. Push that guy in. Now that's about five pumps. And I did not see any grease come out that side. So obviously some went in. I guess it really doesn't need those O-rings. Oh yeah, the grease definitely went in there. You can see it coming back out the groove there. So I'm going to call that good. But that's basically what's happening when you use one of these greasers. Now you don't have to pull the hub off to do this. This slides right over your axle. So it's not that hard to do. It doesn't take but a few minutes. And it'll save you the trouble of doing what I'm doing right now. You can see now, because of the pressure in there, the grease kind of coming back out that groove. So that bearing's full, obviously. I mean, it's brand new. But that's basically what's happening. All right. So you're going to want to get grease packed into all these holes. And then we're going to grease these sleeves up real good here. And remember, these bolts go in from the front. You know you got enough grease in there if you push the bolt out and it pushes a good majority of it out. That means there's really no room in there for water and crap to get in. goes in there all gentle like all right now we've already got our dust shield on these bolts get torqued to 8.1 foot pounds or just snug them it's just a plastic dust shield We filled up our hub, you know, when I say fill it up, you know, we got a good, a good, healthy, generous amount of grease in there and on the outside. That's just to help, again, help displace where any water can get. Now, it's all right if you get grease on your brake rotor right now. We still got to clean her up, but we're just going to gently get that started in, push our axle out. Now you're going to want to clean off the threads of the bolts. Now, Honda wants you to replace these guys because they're a mechanical locker. I'm just going to throw a dab of Loctite on there. Uh, this is my machine. If it were not my machine, I would not be reusing them. But it is mine, so... They're getting reached. So, dab of the blue. This one's for you. All right, I've got the Necronomicon out here. The um, these bolts get torqued to 32 foot pounds, and the brake caliper bracket bolts back here get torqued to 36 foot pounds. This guy gets torqued to 101 foot pounds. I clean off this brake rotor. All right. I had to spread my brake pads out a bit. Make sure they're still seated in their proper spot. I got dab of the blue on each brake caliper bracket bolt. I'm just running everything together right now and then I'll go torque happy with the old torque wrench. Run 
everything down. I do love working on this stuff compared to ambulances. It's just so easy. Everything comes apart really easy. You don't have to fight it. I think I might take out my rear sway bar while I'm here. Who knows? I might make a video about that. I'm just going to run these guys in. It's not tight. It's just ran on. It's because it's a mechanical um, locking nut. It's obviously still working pretty good. Again, we're taking these guys to 32 foot-pounds. Not a whole crap ton of torque. So. I need a deep socket. To get an accurate torque on these, you're going to want to torque on the nut side. And hold the stud side. The bolt side, whatever you want to call it. Inch torque wrench and a punch, and we'll torque that guy down. Again, we're taking this to 101. Now, luckily, because these are drilled and slotted rotors, you can hold that guy. There we go. Go grab a cotter pin. All right, got us a new cotter pin. over all right all we gotta do is put our wheel back on torque on those lug nuts is 80 foot pounds well, guys i hope you like this one uh, i'm just going to do the rears on their own video i was planning on doing them together but i don't want to make the video too long so this is the rear wheel bearings i hope you liked it uh like comment and subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next one